Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be proving an identity. But I wanted to just pose it as a question, what is cosine alpha plus beta? Okay, let's go ahead and find out what it is by using complex numbers because this is going to be fun. And this problem was actually suggested by one of my viewers, which I forgot to include the screenshot for, so I apologize. But don't worry, I'm going to include that in the um, probably comment section. I'll try to put a link for the image. Okay, so you can see who suggested and I'm also going to add it to the description. Anyway, so we have cosine alpha plus beta and we're going to find out what it is. So start by making up two complex numbers in polar form. Cosine alpha plus I sine alpha and W is just going to be cosine beta plus I sine beta. A lot of times we have to memorize this formula and there are easy ways like mnemonics to make it easier, but this will also help you if, in case you get stuck. So let's go ahead and multiply these two complex numbers. Hopefully you know how to multiply them, right? Take cosine alpha plus I sine alpha and just multiply it by cosine beta plus I sine beta. By the way, I said polar form, but I guess this would probably be the standard form with the sine and cosine in place because it's kind of like A plus BI. By the way, I picked two numbers uh, with modulus one. You don't have to, but I think it's a little easier that way. So how do you multiply these? Just distribute. How do you multiply two complex numbers? You just distribute and simplify. So you get cosine alpha, cosine beta, and then cosine alpha, and there's gonna be an I in the front, times sine beta, and then I times sine alpha, cosine beta, and finally, I squared sine alpha sine beta. And what do you think I squared is? Hopefully you know that because that's the most important part of the complex numbers. It's negative one. So let's go ahead and negate this and put it together with the other uh, piece, which is gonna make up the real part. So this is the real part. And then this is gonna be the imaginary part. So let's go ahead and factor out an I and write this as follows. And by the way, I want to write it a little differently because when I work with these formulas, I always want to write the sign first. I don't know why, but that's how I memorize them. So here we go. Now, what is that equal to though, right? I mean, we found it, but what does it mean in terms of cosine of alpha plus beta, right? So we're going to look at the product from another angle and that will be the polar form. So let's go ahead and write these numbers in polar form. This is e to the i alpha, and this is e to the i beta. So what we're going to do now is multiply in polar form or exponential form because it's a lot easier. Look at that. Isn't that too compact? Like, thanks to Euler, we have a very compact way of writing complex numbers, and it's just amazing. I mean, we take these things for granted, but they are just mind-blowing. Okay, no more discoveries like that, right, in math. Maybe somebody will solve the prime number theorem or something similar one day. Who knows, right? Like Fermat's last theorem was obviously a breakthrough. So to multiply them in polar form, we're just going to use the expon exponents rules or laws of exponents, which says add the exponents. Easy, right? We just talked about it in the other video, remember? Yeah, I'm talking about the other channel, the e to the power x plus. If you haven't seen that yet, you need to check it out. Anyway, so this becomes e to the power i times because we can factor i out and we get that. So we have two formulas for the product, but guess what? This isn't polar, that's kind of standard. So let's go ahead and turn this into standard form. How can I write it? I can write this as, remember, if I call this a theta, then I get something like e to the i theta and e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta and theta is the alpha plus beta. So this becomes this guy over here becomes cosine alpha plus beta plus i times sine alpha plus beta. And guess what? It's equal to cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta plus i times blah, blah, blah. But guess what? We have what we need because we're trying to find for cosine, right? We're trying to solve for cosine. And this is cosine alpha plus beta, which happens to be the real part of this number. And the real part of the same number, because they are equal, is this one. Therefore, this is cosine alpha plus beta. Let's write it down one more time. 
And the more you write it, the better because that'll help you remember the formula. That's how I usually memorize. I just write it several times and even assign it as a homework to my students, like write this formula 20 times and they hated me for that, but at the end they ended up memorizing it. Anyways, you might have other methods. So this is cosine alpha plus beta. I just want you to pay attention to a couple things here. First of all, we have kind of like a homogeneous type of uh, formula, which means the cosines are together and the sines are together. So then it's not kind of mixed or is that heterogeneous? What's the other word? I don't know. Something like that. So the same kinds together. And when you have a plus sign, this has to be the opposite. So that kind of helps you figure out cosine alpha minus beta. And hopefully with the sign, it's a similar story. Wait a minute. This process also gives us sine alpha plus beta, but we don't care, do we? Maybe. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.